Whether we like to acknowledge this or not, life is a test of suffering. And it's an incredible opportunity to have something that can ease that suffering just a bit. And I feel like having this that somatic practitioner in your back card for friends or family or anybody you encounter that goes through a hard time and is it suffering in that moment, it's a great way to be a listener. It's a great way to be there for them without having to give them advice. I just love it because it doesn't require speaking. It's this like innate connection that is just really absent in most of our modern day world now. Knowing that actually suffering will happen in this life and that is a part of this experience. When someone's suffering, I can like really be there and not feel like I have to do something for them. That's been there for a very long time. I would say even my earliest career, which was a caddy on the PGA Tour, and for those who might not know anything about golf, it's the person that stays by their side through all of these hardships. And although they're just golf, golf is this mini condensed version of life. A round of golf, you're screaming, you're happy. And then you're a couple minutes later, you're like, I'm like the worst golfer in the world, you know? And you just really embody what your performance is dictating to you. And as a caddy, you're trying to literally not be swayed by your player's emotions as he's going through this roller coaster. And so it taught me how to just not be pushed from my side because I have to be responsible. This person's every shot that they make is costing like millions of dollars. <laughs> and I have and I can't even showcase that I'm frustrated. I have to maintain that. And in this particular case, I didn't even know what I was doing back then, but I was holding that space for them so that they could go through that emotional roller coaster. We are so descriptive. We use language, we break down words, then it's a sentence and then they have to comprehend it. When it comes to emotions, it's kind of the same. We break down what the emotions are called and maybe even a reason why we should be having those emotions. Whereas I look at emotions as they're all the same thing. They just can dance. They can move high, they can move low, they can take you on these incredible journeys, maybe to tears, maybe to like a big belly laugh, but it's all the same. We have such a dissection problem in the westernized world. We just want to dissect everything, even our emotions. And with that comes our thought process. But what if, what if I could watch anger and I could watch sadness and know that they're the same thing? If you can get to that place, you can change the way you see humans and what's happening. And it's the way I can hold space because if I see someone in suffering, I know that that's only a, just a screenshot of a moment in time before that and also after. It could be a completely different story. There's such a journey there. I see a homeless man and I actually don't see like a homeless man. I see someone who in this particular moment is in that frame, but this is a wild world where no one knows what's happening. Easily that person could find themselves with a completely different scenario in another five years.